Hi, I am Dr. Shomo Dash, consultant pulmonologist attached to uh, Soltech Asthma and Allergy Clinic and I am also attached with uh, Manipal Hospitals and Medica Hospital. So uh, today we are here to discuss regarding the obstructive sleep apnea. So what is obstructive sleep apnea? If we try to understand that, obstructive sleep apnea uh, if we think historically or uh, mythologically, probably Kumkan has that disease. And in modern era, uh, we heard he's uh, no more with us. Bapi uh, uh, Lahiri was suffering from this obstructive sleep apnea. So, what is obstructive sleep apnea? So, we, we have this common belief that who snore at night have a very good sleep but exactly opposite is occurring that means if a patient is having snore at night that means she is she or he is not sleeping properly so if one snores at night that means he is not sleeping properly so uh, what are the uh, patient actually what happens why this uh, uh, why why this patient are uh, having snow uh, because their airway get narrowed at night times just like whistle we have to squeeze the uh, that whistle tube so like that when our airway get narrowed then the sound of snoring is coming out so uh, at the night, night time our tongue gets pulled back and because of laxity of the muscles airway get narrowed and this uh, snored, sound of snore comes out. So what are the common symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea? If we consider that common symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea is daytime sleepiness. The patient will come to us that uh, whenever he get time, he fall asleep and they uh, have to wake up in the night because of their snoring and these are the common symptoms and these patients are usually obese and have various comorbidity including hypertension, diabetes and sometimes uh, CKD. So, uh, how prevalent is the obstructive sleep apnea? Obstructive sleep apnea is not an uncommon disease. You have to suspect, that means if you suspect in patients who are obese and having daytime sleepiness, this is not an uncommon disease. Especially the uh, patient who are at risk, that means the young age group, obese, having very much sedentary lifestyle, walking on the table and with the computer, uh, no, not having any physical activity and having some associated uh, comorbidity like hypothyroidism uh, and uh, obstructive airway disease or chronic sinusitis, having nasal block. In those group of patients, uh, they are very much risk of obstructive development of obstructive sleep apnea. So how obstructive sleep apnea patient come to us and what is the impact of that if we think that the one impact is that on his productivity when he get up in the morning he have some morning headache he don't have the fresh sleep that type of feeling and uh, their productivity is less they can't concentrate on a good job so and also they are uh, more irritated that means even their sexual life is also hampered. So this is one part. The more dangerous part is that, so it is one of the commonest cause of road traffic accident. While driving, you get fall asleep because your sleep is hampered during the night time. Not only that, as uh, during the obstructive sleep apnea, you wake up as when well, airway get totally uh, closed. So there is one signal comes from your brain that what are you doing you are not taking breath so some 
emergency hormone that comes of release from the body and that shoot your BP. So because your BP is shoot, so there is a chance of your myocardial infarction, heart failure, uh, uh, blood pressure which is not controlled with uh, medicines. You may have brain stroke. Because of this stress, you will develop uh, diabetes and because of this hypertension, uncontrolled diabetes, ultimately you will have the chronic kidney disease. So, among the, if you uh, see in chronic kidney disease, you are having regular dialysis. Almost in my observation, almost half of the patient they have associated obstructive sleep apnea and which is not treated. So, how to diagnose? So, number thing, number one, as I said, that you have to suspect. There are various questionnaires. You can find it on the website, the airport sleepiness score, or which we are most commonly using now, stop bank questionnaire. You can fill it. Go to this stopbank.ca site, and uh, there is a screening option. You can uh, yourself uh, fill the answer. You can see the how much at risk you are, or ask your doc ask your doctor to fill that questionnaire stop bank questionnaire so if you have a high score of stop bank questionnaire that means you are at risk so you should go for the investigation which usually we do is the sleep polysomnography or the sleep study so that your doctor will advise and you will do the test and now coming to the treatment part so there are two part number one is your lifestyle modification lifestyle modification means starting from your diet to your exercise and your sleeping posture your treatment of uh, this sinusitis and uh, your thyroid this is one part and other part treatment of this obstructive sleep apnea proper so we most of the patient they respond to the cpap therapy which is a uh, instrument that blow continuous air so that your airway not get squeezed so uh, sometimes my patients they told me that how can i sleep with my this cpap machine on my uh, face but be assured that these modern sleep apnea machines they are very much effective they don't have any sound and even the marks they are so soft uh, if you just think like that, you I'm just wearing these specs. But if you uh, if you ask me that whether uh, I'm having any problem with the specs, the first time I, when I'm using that specs, I'm having some problem. But when I, when I get used to with that specs, now I I feel very much comfortable. Rather than rather without using my specs. I'm not feel that comfortable. So you have to use it within few days. That CPAP machine will be, at, your body will add up that CPAP machine. So you don't have any problem. And in some patients, uh, we need some surgical procedure. For that, you need some ENT consultation. Thank you.